PlayStation 5 is the superior console this generation. How they beat Xbox into submission is beyond me. So, we're going to go for a few minutes and we're going to talk about and expand on the reasons why I believe that PlayStation is the superior console this generation and how that even happened with this literally being the weakest performance that PlayStation has ever done outside of the PlayStation 3. So guys, this generation started off obviously as a toss-up. We had COVID, we had everything, in, you know, like the, the perfect recipe for disaster for both of these platforms, for Xbox and for PlayStation. Um, PlayStation 100% you know, has has definitely not delivered on that PlayStation experience that it's known for. Um, the games that have come out have been, you know, basically, I, I, it's kind of weird. Like all of the uh, the sequels that PlayStation has put out to like absolute bangers, you know, like God of War, Spider Man, um, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, stuff like that. All of them games were absolutely bangers when they first came out. And then the follow-ups, the second games were, you know, kind of, I'm not going to say lackluster. It's almost like every single one of them had better gameplay, had better looking visuals, but like worse stories. So they kind of just fell short of recapturing the, the exact fanfare that the first games did. And that was, that, that's kind of weird because that's literally Sony's, you know, like this is their weakest offering in a very long time like the, the, the perfect storm for xbox to 100 percent take over playstation and just run away with it this generation they they didn't do that and it's and it's weird but we're going to get into why so guys as you know i used to be a, a hardcore playstation fan boy I, I was like xbox was just like ah it's xbox don't worry about that it's whatever playstation's number one well, sometime around last generation, I bought the Xbox One X and things started to change. I started to root more for Xbox. I started to be like, yeah, man, I, I, I love Xbox. I want them to be successful. And even to this day, I still believe 100% in the vision that Xbox has, but the execution has just been completely wrong, completely wrong. Now, this generation started for Xbox. I'm gonna tell you exactly where they started going wrong. When Xbox launched, they, they, they came out with the Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X. The Xbox Series S is not a bad console, it's just marketed the wrong way. And you can go back and look, I made a video about this a long time ago. The Xbox Series S should have never been put on the same standing platform in in terms of games per art, per, uh, per, um, parody that the Xbox Series X was on. It, it should have never been done that way. PlayStation didn't bring an offering with that low of an entry point. Xbox should have never tried to force that into, into existence. Um, we saw early on that, you know, Xbox Series S could easily, you know, hold its head above water and, and do the cross-gen games, no problem. Like it, it was basically Xbox One X in terms of in terms of power just you know skimp back a little bit on specs and stuff has all the has all of the same features as the xbox series x the faster memory the pretty much the same cpu just less of a gpu um and 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 slower ram whatever so yeah they, they tried to market this thing as the 1440p xbox you know whatever um it it, it did hit that but but now when you look at games that are coming out for Unreal Engine 5, this thing isn't good enough, period. Like, it's not good. I mean, yeah, obviously with enough time and resources and money and dedication and optimization and blah, 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 they can get these newer games running on the Xbox Series S. I mean, look at the stuff they've put on freaking Switch. Obviously, if enough time is devoted to doing it, they can do it. Witcher 3 running on Nintendo Switch is all the proof you need that, yeah, with enough time and money, they can optimize for Series S. But what does that do? That literally puts Xbox on the back burner when it comes to third-party support. 
if if they've got to stop production, slow everything down, find ways to work to get these games to run on Series S before shipping and making any money, that continuously puts a strain on developers to try to find ways to come up with that money so that they can actually so that they can actually be able to do what they need to do to put these games out. Like it's not fair to ask developers for that. But that also opens another door for for Sony, for PlayStation to come in and be like, hey man, we'll give you this much money towards the development cost if you just skip Xbox. And they're like, ah, oh, you know what, man? They got Game Pass over there. I mean, we'll get like we'll, we'll get to the Game Pass thing. They're like, yeah, you know what? Let's just do it. Chances of making that money back are boom. We'll get it up front. Then later we have the opportunity to, you know, put that put that uh, over there on the Xbox. So now we're gonna get to before we start talking about the next part. Um, I wanted to bring in the <clears throat> the whole thing about PlayStation Five Pro, Xbox Series S being the weakest console in the in the in the spectrum of next gen consoles right now um and and playstation's ability to just be able to get these third party games is only going to be exacerbated it's only going to be worse once playstation 5 pro is is announced and once it launches once developers start optimizing for playstation 5 pro and already for playstation 5 that just puts xbox series s further and further and further away making it less likely for developers to commit to the cost to putting those games to porting those games to xbox series s so yes when i say that xbox needs to refocus the the xbox series s into its own thing it it, it has to it has to in order for xbox to continue to compete with playstation and to be able to bring those experiences to the xbox platform they got to cut that little monster loose they have to game pass is another issue for xbox at this current point in time so with the invent with, with with the advent of of game pass this generation um game pass has made it so that xbox is you, you, not necessarily the platform it, it is a lot harder for people to want to buy and purchase games full price on the xbox platform um it it's it it just means the games have to be better they have to be bangers for people on xbox to fork over that extra money that they're asking you know 70 dollars for a game hey man pay us 70 dollars we want to we, we don't want to put the game on game pass so yeah games have to hit a higher standard for xbox gamers to be willing to fork over that extra money which also puts more of a strain on developers that are like you know what man like we know our game is not gonna be able to compete that well with with what's on game pass so how do we ask for full price in a in a on a platform that literally gives away triple a bangers for a monthly subscription price and then you've got ubisoft that's jumped into that fray offering ubisoft plus on xbox on playstation on pc so in turn it's making gamers a lot more aware of like hey where do we want to put our money and what do we want to spend our money on now playstation does not have an all-out you know um get games day one for a subscription price they, they just don't have that so in developers mind it makes playstation a more lucrative experience and it's kind of the perfect storm for xbox to be getting skipped by all of these games because xbox has pretty much made the xbox ecosystem literally the most friendliest to gamers and allow them to get the most bang for their buck while <laughs> while while just paying for game pass like you can get a very good gaming experience this whole generation just by paying a monthly subscription for game pass seriously you, you don't have to worry about buying any other games and now that call of duty is coming to game pass why would you continue to buy 70 dollar 70 dollar games but how does how does all that make the playstation the premium freaking or or the the uh, you know what, what did i say the premium the premium freaking console 
though the superior console this generation. Well, guys, PlayStation has itself isolated from pretty much everything. They are putting their games on PC, but they're doing it at an extended date. Um, so, so most of the PlayStation fans are like, ah, oh, yeah, we don't really care, whatever. Um, it's it's kind of it's kind of like they're reinforcing their delusional. Um, I mean, they they are pretty much just extending the, the inevitable when it comes to PlayStation. But right now, guys, with with PlayStation, you know, it, it is it is the superior freaking the superior console right now, and that's because for Pillar Three of the Xboxes, they started putting their games on PlayStation. Now, I don't have a problem with that, and and anybody that has a problem with that, it's it's you know. You, you kind of have to look at it from 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 a perspective like okay more people get a play but but xbox messed it up they, they messed it up they they were too they're just too inconsistent with their messaging so nobody really knows what to expect phil spencer comes out and says no nah, man it's not gonna be starfield not indiana jones and then they announce indiana jones with an actual freaking release date for playstation 5 or or time frame and so when you start getting those mixed signals, that really does just kind of make it like, yeah, dude, PlayStation 5 is superior. They've sold more. You can get Xbox games on PlayStation now. You don't have to worry about it if you want to live and still continue to uphold the traditional console cycle. Yeah, PlayStation's your, your, your best bet. I mean, honestly, it, it's inevitable that Xbox is going to bring more games to PlayStation. And... Like, there's nobody that's going to stop them. They, they've pretty much already 100% decided, like, look, we're, we're putting our games on PlayStation. It, it doesn't matter. We're, we're, we're going to do it. We tested a few. They seem to have done well. We're going to test another one. We're going to bring one out closer after launch. It, it's only a matter of time before that happens. Now, there's some ways that Xbox could fix this. And... You know, I'm going to close this video out with this. The ways that Xbox could fix this, turn this ship around, and actually get back on track to where people believe in the Xbox platform. They don't, they, they, they don't necessarily, I mean, they're still there for the publishing, for the games, for all of that stuff. If people still love Xbox. But how can they 100% regain their dignity in a console space? They need to cut Xbox Series S loose. They have to. I've, I said before. Xbox Series S should have been can, should have been marketed toward um, kids and family. Now, is what that means is they decouple it from the parity clause, and 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 going forward, no developers do not have to make a game in parity with Xbox Series S if they are if PlayStation Five is the the, the main platform for development. If PlayStation Five is the main platform for development the developers should only have to worry about porting to Xbox Series X. If they choose to, at a later date, they can go into and optimize that game for Xbox Series S, but launch parity should be scrapped immediately. Uh, Xbox needs to get Toys for Bob back. They need to put all of their other studios, like Rare, um, you know, all, all of the studios that definitely know how, I mean, um, Gosh dang it, what, what's the name of that studio? The ones that, that do Psychonauts. So what they need to do is they need to get all them studios together and just start pumping out games that will compete with Nintendo for the Xbox Series S. They, they should. Like All of them developers should, should just start working on creating exclusive content for Xbox Series S that's going to compete for that dollar for the kids for the younger generation of gamers, that's where Xbox Series S is in the market. That's that's where it should be. It's a perfect opportunity and the perfect system to literally still go head to head with with Nintendo's next system. They can still go head to head and still compete for that younger generation of dollars for games. They can 100% do that. And and the the sooner that Microsoft does that, the better. But they're more interested in selling the games on PlayStation when they could be rebuilding the whole foundation of Xbox around Xbox consoles as a pillar and then Game Pass and other things definitely out to the side. Um, the next thing that Xbox needs to do is, um, well, they are kind of already doing this, the, the, tiered, the tiered Game Pass uh, subscription. 
Um, putting the day and date games on a higher tier for like Call of Duty and all these other new games, that's a perfect start for them. That's that's exactly what they needed to do. Twenty dollars a month for the higher tier games, and then you know, fifteen fifteen dollars the games come at a later date, and then down to just core. That's perfect. That I, I agree with that. I think that's absolutely the best way now now people will be like oh man if i want to buy the game i need to buy it day one uh, or i gotta wait x amount of time for it to actually come to game pass that's perfect they should have probably already done that in the first place giving people brand new games day and date for 15 dollars a month was actually a little bit kind of extreme i mean especially with especially with the cadence that xbox now has the ability to produce they they definitely needed to do that it, it should shake back up the market and start making things a little bit better at least in the in the in the in the long term for xbox but up front yeah a lot of people are going to be mad i already canceled both my game pass subscriptions just because it, i'm not getting the value out of it because i don't play enough games on game pass for it to even matter in the first place but those are the two things that oh and messaging Xbox really needs to get back on the mes messaging. They, they, they cannot keep doing these blunders of, yeah, man, we got a vowed, it's coming out, get hyped for it, and then, oh, man, but it's only going to be 30 frames per second. Hellblade 2, oh, but it's only going to be 30 frames per second and 21.9 and not even support 21.9 when you put it on a monitor. What are you thinking, Xbox? Just start making your game support 21.9. Do it. It'll be amazing. Then people can buy monitors and actually freaking enjoy it. But yeah, mess messaging has to fi get fixed. You you talked 4K, 120, all of that stuff, the whole generation, and now all of a sudden we're getting we're we're getting 30 frames per second for Xbox games. Like I can see why people are getting upset. And every single PlayStation game is launching with a 60 FPS mode, whether it's good or utilizing frame generation or whatever. It gives the other side something to brag about why your guys are sad. Now, could Xbox still turn this around and come back and potentially win this generation? No. This generation's over for Xbox. It's over. It, it's already over. There's there's really no way to come back and, and retake the crown from PlayStation. They're already too entrenched. Xbox has already set, uh, has already set the stage for putting games on the PlayStation. I, I think Xbox really just needs to, at this point, focus on the messaging, figure out exactly what your brand is going to be and what your brand is going to do. If you're going to continue to make hardware, make hardware, make good enough hardware to where when people buy it, it's actually going to deliver that 4K 60 experience. And if not, try to try to in, try to inform your your customers while going why going PC would be better. Now, I don't think that Xbox is, I think, I do think Xbox should make hardware next generation, but I also think they should sell a second type of product, which is the Xbox operating system or Xbox operating system that people could go out, buy a PC and load that onto it and run that, build that PC and have it run like an Xbox within spec or whatever. Um, I think that that there would probably be the best way forward for Xbox. And at this point, man, like, I still want Xbox to succeed. I still want them to do good, but in terms of consoles, yeah, Xbox is not there now. It's just it's not even it's not even a competition anymore. Once they started putting their games on the competing platform, there's no longer any kind of exclusivity to buy an Xbox. There's there's no reason to own an Xbox outside of Hey man, I really love the brand and I want a, a, a an Xbox co branded console. You can get a PC and play every single game on Xbox on a PC. You can play a select few on a PlayStation and more coming at a later date. So it just depends. Do you want to play day one Xbox games? You can buy a PC or you can get an Xbox oh, console. If you don't mind waiting, if other games on PlayStation are your thing, definitely get a PlayStation and live there have that do have it do be be fun you know i mean don't expect everything from xbox but expect some things to continue to come so all right my friends that's just how i feel i still want xbox to do good i still love xbox i still believe in the, the i still believe in what xbox is doing and i do think that even if xbox goes third-party publisher but still continues to create create an xbox platform and an xbox console that's the only way they're going to survive and not just become like another like like sega 
Um, that, that's the only way they do it. That's the only way they pull it off. Um, could Xbox put out a handheld and, and turn things around? Absolutely, absolutely. If it has access to Steam and other things, absolutely. That, 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 would, be an, it, that would be an amazing thing for Xbox. Like, Xbox is not dead. They're just evolving. They're taking a look at the market and they're trying to figure out where they fit and they're stumbling a lot along the way and it really is and it really does kind of give customers and fans, you know, it, it, it does. It produces a lot of anxiety. I see a lot of the way people are talking over on, you know, in Reddit and Discord, um, over on Twitter, everywhere, all the social media. I see how people are reacting to things and, and it sucks. It sucks, you know, especially if you're a fan and you've been on something for a very long time. I can definitely see that. But come on, my my, my, my fellow Xbox friends, just accept this is like, hey man, this was a, this was a, this this really was a generation that Xbox could have won, but they gave it away. They they literally just said, oh, here you go, PlayStation. And hey, while you're taking it, have some of our games too. It just that's just the way it worked out, my friends. So. If you guys like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.